So in the next few videos, we're going to be talking about the sun and stars, really. Those objects in the sky that have really fascinated humans forever, haven't they, Paul? I mean, it's hard to imagine anything in the sky which is so fundamental to humanity and to life and the sun. I mean, giver of all food, heat, light. I mean, it's obviously crucially important. And, uh, across multiple cultures, right? I mean, it's not just one culture that has revered the sun. It's pretty universal, isn't it? I guess there might be some cave-dwelling culture that didn't worship it or have some myth about it, but that'd be very, very rare. What we're going to talk about now is how we actually came to understand what this thing is. I mean, clearly people knew the sun rose in the morning, it gave us heat, it gave us light, but what actually is it? How could you possibly work that out? Well, I mean, this is, I guess, the interesting thing, right? You can't really just get a measuring device, you can't send a spacecraft to go do it. So how did they start to figuring out the sun was what the sun was? Well, here's what we're going to go through in the next few videos. So the first step is going to be working out how far away the sun is. I mean, the amount of time I spend figuring out how far away everything is, this is right. This is one of the most fun little aspects in astronomy, isn't it, Paul? Yes, this was always used to bug me when I first became an astronomer. Um, it actually reminds me of archaeology. I remember um, I always used to think archaeology was like Indiana Jones. You'd find this magic treasure in the jungle somewhere. But actually discovered that archaeologists for most of their life try to work out exactly how old is this piece of pottery. And it's the same for astronomers. You yeah. kind of think it's searching the sky to discover a new planet or a star. But a lot of it is, okay, we've seen this faint fuzzy smudge. <laughs> how far away is it? Why, why is that important? Well, because isn't it that once we figure out how far away it is, we can start doing the rest of this. What is it? How big is it? age, all these other properties that are really key to their understanding. And we'll come back to that in a second. But just so an outline of where we're going to go for the next several videos, once we've talked about finding how far away the sun is and the general problem of distances in astronomy, which is a huge problem, we're then going to talk about how much does the sun weigh, and that, that will involve a theory of gravity that allows us to work at its density. Okay. Um, then we're going to talk about what it's made of. Yep which will introduce the concept of spectroscopy, which is another fundamental thing we both do. as One a of the biggest tools that we have in astronomy, isn't it? And then we're going to go on to nuclear physics. Yeah. So this is just an outline of where we're going to go. But first of all, let's think about why it's hard to measure distances. Yeah. I mean, the fundamental problem is that when you take a picture of something, like you're currently watching a picture of us taken on this camera, you might think you're seeing how big something is and how far away, but what you're actually measuring is the angle subtended. So if you're looking at something with the human eye, if you get light coming in from this direction, it'll be brought to focus on one point in the retina, and light coming in from another direction will be brought to focus on a different point in the retina, and that then gets sent to your eye. Um, if it's a camera, again, light from one direction is brought to focus at one point on your film or your detector, and light from another direction somewhere else. So essentially, this is just a technical version of the human eye. Yeah, so when you've got an image like this, um, there'll be a certain number of pixels from here to here, and that'll tell you the angle subtended by this kangaroo that was sitting in our front garden a couple of days ago. Um, likewise, if you look at something like this, um, you're looking at the angle from there to there, not the actual size. That's right. So, so th I guess this is the question, right? If you're looking at the angle, how do you then change that into size? Yeah, and the trouble is that something that's small and nearby and big and far away can look yes. the same. That's right. So, for example, the moon and the sun both subtend an angle of about half a degree as viewed by the Earth, so about the same angle. That's right. If you put them side by side, they're about the same size. But in fact, as we'll discover later, the moon is actually 400 times smaller and 400 times closer. That's right. So it's just, so it's really, it's not quite an optical illusion, it's just the way our eye interprets essentially the data that it sees. But hold on a minute. I mean, it's, we know that with cameras, you've got a depth of field uh, that you can t twist the knob and see how far away something is. That's true, but I guess I think the main issue here is that's only going to affect you maybe the size of a room or the house when you're talking about 150 million kilometers away, 10 meters doesn't really matter that much, does it, Paul? No. 